Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now it's good to see you here in the house of the Lord today. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate the beautiful weather God's given us in which to come to the house of God to worship. And we welcome every one of you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during this coming hour we can be an inspiration to you. Now if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you're tuned to the station where you're now listening, each day Monday through Saturday you can get the broadcast at 12 o'clock noon. Appreciate if you do that, maybe just recently come to the Athens area and you haven't picked up our broadcast as yet and so if you tune in at 12 o'clock noon each day, Monday through Saturday, you can get our daily broadcast. I'd like for you to write in and get some of our cassette tapes. Now, cassette tape today is number 152. I'm speaking on the subject, The Devil's Spiderweb. The Devil's Spiderweb, tape number 152. And all the singing and music and the message will be on cassette tape. Maybe some of you that's thinking about getting your parents or someone a gift for Christmas and you don't know what to get them. If they don't have a tape recorder, why don't you get them one? Because there's a lot of tapes available today with sermons and music, singing. Can be a blessing to them. Be a wonderful gift to give to some shut-in or some elderly person that it could be a real blessing to. So you write in and get these cassette tape. They'll be a blessing to you. We send them out for a gift of $3 for each tape. And the gift is used to help pay for the radio expense. So you write to me next week and pray for me, and I appreciate it. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. I'm reading my text today from Job chapter 8. But before I read from Job chapter 8, I want to answer a question. We have a dear listener over in Cannon, Georgia, Mrs. Murdy Peppers. She's 76 years old. And she's been listening to the broadcast for years. She gets her daily spiritual food from the broadcast. And we appreciate Sister Peppers. And she wrote in and said, Preach Edwards, on your Sunday morning broadcast, would you please explain these verses to me? Now these verses are found in Revelation chapter 20. The verses I'll explain to Sister Peppers before I read my text for today. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15. I will read them and explain them as I move along. If you want to follow me in Revelation chapter 20. Then you turn to chapter 20 and look at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat upon it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. Now this great white throne here is the great white throne judgment bar of God. This will be the throne or the place where God will judge sinners at the end of the great millennium. Now you must remember the saints and the sinners will not be judged at the same time. The Christians will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ during the tribulation period. The sinners will be judged at the end of the millennium at the great white throne judgment of God. And so in verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Now the dead here, of course, are the dead in trespassing sins that died without God. And they'll stand before God. This judgment is yet in the future. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books. Notice plural, B-W-O-K-S, according to their works. Now the book of life is the book here where their name had not been placed. Now when you get saved, your name is placed in the Lamb's book of life. Or there is a book where your name is kept and placed whenever you're born and your name is given. But your name, your heavenly name, the name that's going to really count for you will be placed in the Lamb's book of life. And so here the books of what you're concerned about, B-O-O-K-S. God is keeping books on all sinners. Every sinner that dies without God will face these books. Will face his record at the judgment bar of God. The books will be open. 
And God will look at his record and all the sins he's committed from the time he came into the world until he died will be recorded in these books. Now when you get saved, God blots out all of those sins and they're never brought up against you anymore. But if a man dies without God, he faces all of his sins. The sins he committed, they're recorded in the books of God and he's judged out of those books. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell lived up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Now the sea here, of course, where people die in the sea, the bodies come up, and hell is where people that die, their souls go down into hell, and then it says uh, they'll be delivered up, death and hell, that is the soul and the body will be reunited, and they stand before God to be judged according to their works. And death and hell, that is the body and the soul, will be cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now that second death takes place when you're cast into the lake of fire. You're cut off from God forever. You're abandoned from God forever in the lake of fire. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So when that book of life is open, we saw in verse 12, and your name is not there, you'll be cast into the lake of fire, and then you'll be judged out of these books to determine your degree of punishment. That has nothing to do with the time element. The time element is forever, but there is a degree of punishment in hell. Some people are going to be punished more severe than others, and that's why the record is kept, and that's why the books are open. That good moral mother that lived a good, clean life all of her days, good to her husband, good to her children, good to her neighbors, maybe went to church, maybe joined the church, never saved. She dies and goes to hell. She comes before the judgment bar of God. That stands Adolf Hitler that killed six million Jews, large response for 40 million deaths. And there's old Joe Stalin and all the drunks and the God-haters and the blasphemers and the dope addicts and the drunkards and all of that crowd standing before God? Do you think that good moral mother is going to get the same degree of punishment as those fellows? No, sir, never. She'll be punished, but not with the same degree of punishment. That's why the books will be open to determine their degree of punishment in hell. So I hope that Sister Peppers is listening in today and that will clear up her mind on those scriptures she wanted to know what they meant. Now turn to Job, will you please? The book of Job, chapter 8. Mar, can the flag grow without water? While it is yet in the greenness and not cut down, it withers before any other herb. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrites' hope shall perish. Whose hope shall be cut off, whose trust shall be a spider's web. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. He is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped about the heap, and seeth the place of stones. If he destroy from his place, then it shall deny him, saying, I have not seen thee. Behold, this is the joy of his way, and out of the earth shall others grow. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers, till he fill thy mouth with laughing, and thy lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. Now notice in verse 14, whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust shall be a spider's web. Now there's not any of you here today, I'm sure, but what doesn't know what a spider's web is? You find them in the corners and maybe your homes or buildings or someplace, you can always maybe discover a spider web. Have you ever seen a spider web and then a fly or uh, insect get caught in that web? And when that insect gets caught in that web, then that makes good food for that spider. He knows what he's doing. He sets a web and, and the flies, the insects get caught in the spider's web. And then the old spider, he has a feast. Now, we want to talk about the devil's spider web today. The devil has his spider web and in that spider web, he's caught a lot of people, no doubt about it. I want to mention some of the ways people have been caught in this spider web today that I hope will help us as we look into God's Word. Number one, there's a web of worldly pleasure. Now, there's never been a time in the history of mankind 
when people are so pleasure mad as in this hour in which we live. Every nation except maybe some poor nation like Ethiopia, some nation where they're starving to death, don't have means whereby to engage in pleasure. The whole world is going wild in worldly pleasure. Now this is a fulfillment of the word of God. The Bible plainly said in the last days men should be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That's being fulfilled before our very eyes today. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 to love not the pleasures of this world or the things of this world. And 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4 love not the pleasures. They love pleasures more than the love of God. Now that's natural for sinners. But you have a lot of sinners today that have the name on church rolls that will travel for miles to get in on worldly pleasure. They'll spend hundreds of dollars for worldly pleasure. They have their names on church rolls and they expect to go to heaven when they die, but they've been caught in the devil's web. They are not right with God, most of them. If they are, they're backslidden on the Lord. You have people drive for miles and miles and drive all night, maybe on Saturday night. Got the names on the church roll, but on Sunday they've been driving, enjoying worldly pleasure, and they just don't feel like getting up and going to the house of God. Now why is that? The reason is they love pleasure more than they love God. And most of these people that are drowned in worldly pleasure expects to go to heaven when they die. Now when God saves you and puts the Spirit of God in you, He puts the love of God in you. And if you love pleasure more than you love God, you better check up. You may be caught in the devil's spider web and you're on the road to destruction. This world has gone mad over pleasure today. People made a God out of sports today. There's nothing wrong in good, clean sports done right. It's good for youth. But when it gets into evil and is, is wrong, that is when people make wrong out of it, then it is wrong. You can't make right out of wrong. Now it can be made for good or it can be made for evil. Back many years ago, you could run a revival meeting, put up a tent, announce a meeting in the church, and people would come because they like to go someplace. But today, everybody, most everybody of the world today, are so wild about worldly pleasure, they don't have time for the house of God. That's why a lot of meetings today are being uh, cut half in two as far as the length is concerned, the time is concerned. Start the meetings on Sunday, close out on Wednesday because people love worldly pleasures and they're going to engage in worldly pleasure over the weekend on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and maybe Sunday, and they don't have time for God. They have been caught in the devil's spiderweb in regard to worldly pleasure at any time that any saved person lets pleasure come between them and God, then it's dead wrong. They have made a God out of their pleasure. Now this world out here today that's lost without God, beer soaking, beer guzzling, liquor drinking, wine drinking world out here on the road to hell, you can't expect any better out of that drunken mob because they're not saved, they know not God. But you can expect better out of God's people and many of God's people has been caught in the devil's spider web in respect to worldly pleasure. Number two, there's a web of financial obligation. Now I want you to put your feet on the floor and give me your ears for just a moment. I want to try to help you here. In Romans chapter 13 and verse 8, O no man anything but to love one another. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11, Dear beloved, I beseech you, strangers and pilgrims, to stain from flesh to lessons war against the soul. Now there can be trouble between husband and wife over this very thing. Now you need to be careful about how you obligate yourself financially. There's been many of a good home broken up because the young couple or the couple obligated themselves financially to the extent they could not meet their obligations. Beloved, you should not spend more than you earn. If you spend more than you earn, common sense tells you there's trouble down the road. And you become irritable. And husband and wife are beginning to fuss and quarrel about nothing. Just at the drop of a hat, they're ready to fuss and quarrel and separate. All because of that financial strain. Now if the devil can get you so obligated financially, until he can get you in that condition, then you're headed for the rocks. A lot of young people, they think they got to have everything when they start out housekeeping that mother and dad has and they've been housekeeping for 40 years. 
You can't start out where mother and daddy is when you get married. You need to start out on the bottom and gradually build up. Now you run out here, you think you got to have the best of funny tour. You think you got to have the nice of home. You got to have a new automobile. You think you got to have a boat. Just got to have these things. And then you obligate yourself financially. And the first thing you know, you can't meet your obligations. And there's trouble in the land. There's nothing that will affect you more spiritually and harm your spiritual life and your home life is by biting off more than you can chew. Buying more than you can pay for. Now listen to me, don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I'm not criticizing credit cards. But these credit cards got a lot of people in trouble. Now they're good to use if you use them in the right way. If you're smart enough, if you buy something and run and pay it off before you have to pay that interest, you're pretty smart. But people take these credit cards and they'll go to these shopping places and it's a whole lot easier to grab that little card out and hand it out there and get it stamped than it is to open your wallet or your purse and pay for what you're buying. You'll say, well, I'll just buy it with my credit card and I'll pay for it later. And before you realize it, you've heaped up on that credit card a large account and then they add the interest to that and you're paying a lot of interest on that money and it takes you a, a long, long time to pay it off and it's, a, it's trouble to you and it's trouble in your home. You beware of these credit cards, beloved. If you can use them for a good cause at the, in the right way, well and good. But that's a devil's spider web and you'll get your pocketbook full of these credit cards and you'll go out here and you'll buy here and buy there and use several different cards to purchase things and then at the end of the month, here comes these bills. And you begin to pull your hair and say, my goodness, how am I going to pay this bill? And the first thing you know, you're fussing and calling, and you can't really buy what you need. And you go into a store a lot of times, and you'll buy something if you got that credit card that you wouldn't pay cash for that maybe you really don't need. Now, a lot of good wives can help their husbands out by checking out these little... Uh, uh, stamps are things you get out of magazines or you cut them out clippings you can clip them out and get a little discount on something and a good wise wife many times can help out on the grocery bill a lot of good women sit for hours at a time cutting those things out they can save on their grocery bill but they can be a danger there and here's the danger now you better watch it you'll take a coupon in the store and you say well I got a 25 cent coupon and you'll see something there that you can get that 25 cents off on that coupon and you really don't need it. But because you can get 25 cents off on it, you go ahead and buy it anyway. And that's wrong. That's a devil's spider web. Now it's good. My wife sits for hours and she'll cut out those things. And when she goes to the grocery store, she'll save two or three dollars or more on our grocery bill. But if she goes into the grocery store and she's got a coupon for 40 cent discount on something, she spots something she hadn't thought about, she didn't have on the grocery list, she said, well, since I can get 40 cents off, I really don't need it, I'm going to buy it anyhow. That's a devil's spider web. That's why you get into trouble. If you carry those coupons to you to the grocery, with you to the grocery store and you don't need it, I don't care how much they let you have off on it, they don't you buy it. Don't buy it. If you don't need it, don't buy it. A lot of times you go in and people have sales on. And many times these merchants run the prices up and then cut the price back and tell you they got a big sale on. And they'll cut the sale price very slim. They're not, not going to lose much on that. Don't, don't, don't you kid yourself. And you'll walk in and you'll say, well, none of this thing is about 40% uh, uh, off. I really don't need it, but I better go ahead and buy it anyway. And you'll buy it because it's on sale. And then you obligate yourself in that manner. You have to be very, very careful about these things. Don't go out here and buy things you don't need. Because if you do, you're going to get yourself into trouble. All of us, most people are there just living from week to week or month to month. And you need to be careful about that. Lest the devil get you entangled into spider webs and you can't get out. There's some of you people sitting out there right now. Every month you have to strain to pay those bills coming in. Now, you didn't think about that when you was buying those things, did you? Now, you need to think about that before you buy those things. Now, we have a lot of people, they've got, to, they've got to keep up with the Joneses. Now, the Joneses got this, and we got to get that. And, and if you knew how much the Joneses owed, you'd be very careful about trying to keep up with them. Now, let the Joneses go ahead and get their head in the spider web, and you stay out of it. Don't get entangled in the devil's spider web. Don't spend more 
than you have coming in. And when you buy something of a, of a large price on it, be sure that you can see your way clear down the road before you buy it. Now you step out there and buy something and, and uh, uh, promise to pay a big price for it and on down the road you can't see your way clear. You may run into trouble down there. You're getting the devil's spider web down there and it may cause friction between you and your wife or you and your children and it might break up your home and those things can get into the church and cause trouble in the church. When you come into the house of God on the Lord's day and you're in an evil spirit because your wife went to town and, and spent a whole lot of money she should not have spent and maybe you fussed about it, you come to the house of God and, and you're still not in the right attitude and right spirit, you can come in and hinder the service of God. Now you young people, don't bite off more than you can chew. Pay as you go. You may say, Preach Evans, do you have any credit cards? I sure don't. And that's not all. I'm not going to have any. Because if I had a credit card, I'd go out here and buy something I didn't need. And I know myself, and I'm not going to get my feet in the spider web like that. Now, don't misunderstand me. If you can use a credit card for good and know how to use it, help yourself. That's your business. But a lot of people don't know how to use the thing. And they walk right into the spider web before they realize it. And that's the devil's spider web. Now, pay as you go. Don't bite off more than you can chew. There'll be some things you'll have to buy on the credit. Maybe a home or furniture, an automobile, but see your way clear. Other things you can pay for as you go along. The Christmas time coming up, poor people go out here. They'll ram themselves in debt. They'll use their credit cards. They'll spend all their money. And then after Christmas, here comes these bills in. All the year long, you'll be trying to pay off those bills that you made at Christmas time. Some of you right now paying on bills that you made last Christmas and the Christmas before. And this Christmas, you'll run out here and stick your head in the spider web again. You need to be careful. And then realize that you can wreck yourself spiritually in that respect and not be so gullible. A lot of people are so gullible in these things. Like the man, that a uh, 75-year-old man, it, a man, salesman came along, and a lot of these high-pressure salesmen can really get you in trouble. And he came along and, and sold the old man some pills and told him if he'd take those tablets, why well, he'd feel a lot younger. He could feel just like a young man again. And he sold that old 75-year-old fella a lot of those tablets. And the man gave him the money and started taking those tablets every hour on the hour like the, the salesman told him to. In a few days, he came back and maybe hoping to sell him some more and, and said to the man's wife, said, Where, where's your husband? Why, she said he's been taking them tablets and he's down yonder now beside the road with his little bookcase. He's caught to catch the school bus, going to start back to school. Well, now that's, that's what I call pretty uh, high-pressure salesmanship, don't you? But a lot of people are so gullible until they swallow that kind of stuff. You get all kind of fads today and ways to lose weight. There's only one way to lose weight. Now you could read about, hear about uh, a hundred or more different ways to lose weight. There's only one real way to do it. Push back from the table. What made you fat in the first place? Eating or stop eating so much. Now that's the only way to do it. You go out here taking these pills, drinking the, the liquids and, and taking all kind of exercise. And exercise is all right. But beloved, you go buy all kinds of exercise machines. You're going to get that weight off. There's only one way you can do it. That's to push back from the table and then maybe take some exercise. As long as you sit there and eat, you're going to keep your weight and you'll gain weight. That's the only way in the world to do it. A lot of people, you know, they're coming in and out and say, well, we have discovered something to, um, uh, to make uh, hair grow on bald heads. And people all over the nation will say, well, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy that. It'll make hair grow on a bald head. And let me tell you something. There's nothing invented yet that'll make hair grow on a bald head. Now, you may try all kinds, and, but there's nothing that'll really do the job. If they ever invent something that'll uh, grow hair on a bald head, you'll hear about it, brother. But it's not been invented yet. They might come around to it sometime, but not yet. Now watch these high-pressure high salesmen when they come along. You got some today could go down to the Eskimo land and sell fans to the Eskimos. You, they just have the high pressure. They can do that. They know how to do it, and they'll sell you something that you don't need. And you need to be careful about buying something, especially buying it on the credit, or spending your good money for something you don't need. 
Be careful how you spend your money. Don't be a skin for the type one, but be careful. Somebody said a nickel saved uh, is a nickel earned. If you save a nickel, don't spend it. That's as good as earn a nickel. And uh, be saving. Jesus was saving. He said when he fed the multitude, take up everything left and don't throw away anything. Be saving with what you have. And be careful what you buy and what you spend. And don't run out here and buy something just to keep up with the crowd. All right, I must move on. I'll not be able to finish the message today anyway. That's the old web of bad habits. The old web of, web of bad habits. I was called yesterday to a home. And a woman of pitiful sight had been drunk for six weeks. And there she's a pitiful sight. Sucking one cigarette after another. And crying and pleading and begging. Oh, preacher Edwards, I... I got to have help. I, I need help. I, I got to get off of this lick. I need to give up these cigarettes. Now, let me tell you something. This nation today is absolutely a beer guzzling nation. Every time you see an advertisement, somebody, you see a beer advertisement. That beer is an enticement to drink a little something stronger a little later. Now, people say, well, I can drink beer. It won't make me drunk. I like it. I enjoy it. All right. Go ahead, hardhead. One of these days, you're going to be wanting something a little stronger. And the first thing you know, you'll end up a drunkard. Not only that, when your children see you guzzling beer, then they go into guzzle beer. And the next thing you know, they'll be guzzling wine and guzzling hard liquor. And maybe on dope. And that's a devil's spider web. Throw the stuff out if you got it in your house. Don't buy it anymore. Quit drinking the rotten stuff. And then quit throwing your money away and you won't turn out to be a drunkard. That woman was a pitiful sight. I felt so sorry for her. And it's pitiful when you see people enslaved on alcohol and cigarettes. People killing themselves, sucking cigarettes every day, going to a premature grave. They'll kill you. You'll go to the grave a lot quicker if you're a cigarette smoker, a liquor drinker, a beer guzzler, a dope addict. You'll go to the grave chase a whole lot quicker than you would otherwise. And then, of course, we find the old web of, of the evil Hollywood movies. Now, a lot of you people are enslaved by these movies on TV. The TV is like the automobile, and it's like the radio. It's here to stay. And I'm not telling you to throw your TV out the door because I know you won't do it. What I'm trying to tell you to do is be careful what you look at. I have a TV in my house, and I look mostly at the news. That's what I look at. I don't usually waste my time on looking at anything else. Or maybe I might look at a football game or a baseball game. But that's just about it. I very seldom ever look at anything else than the news. And you've got to be careful. You'll get hooked on these things. There's a lot of women today. You couldn't get them to go to their mama's funeral. Beloved, if it had in the morning when some of these old programs come on, and they got to see their program, you know, and see how it come out. The, uh, little Susie was left crying yesterday, and they wonder whether Johnny killed a, a Jim or not. And then just go ahead and bury Mama today because I just don't feel like going. I got to stay here and see my soap opera, and I can't afford to miss that. And now they got these um, video uh, machines where that you be sure you won't miss it. If you do have to go to the funeral, if you do have to go to church, then you can tune the thing in and look at it when you get back. What have you done? You've walked in the devil's spider web. You're enslaved by these things. They have captured you. You spend no time reading God's word. You spend no time in prayer. You spend no time in working for God. You spend all of your time looking at this evil trash on TV. And so many of the radio stations, they are so rotten in some of the songs that they play until it's repulsive. And a lot of people let some of that trash get into their mind and ears all day long. And you need to be careful about what you even listen to. Now you listen to me today. The devil can get you to walk into that spider web and he's got you before you realize it. And then there's a web of styles and fashions. You have people today that got to get all the new styles. They got to have all the new fashions. You know why they change these styles and fashions every year? The merchants do that to make money. They do that because they know they have to do that to make money. And the people run out and break their neck to get the new style and the new fashion. If you'll hold on to what you've got, it'll come back in style pretty soon. I've had suits of clothes and shoes that I wore went out of style. I kept them, kept wearing them, they came back into style. Went out of style, come back into style. Don't you go crazy over these new styles and new fashions. You wear what you should wear 
and don't throw it away and keep it and keep wearing it and just let the styles and fashions run their courses and people get hooked in the spider web and spend their money for it anyway and you be careful what you buy just in order to stay in style. I don't care nothing about styles. I got away from that a long time ago. I buy what I want and if I like it, I buy it. If I buy it, I wear it, whether it's in style or not. Sometimes my wife says, well, honey, that's not in style. I don't give a rip whether it's in style or not. If it feels good, I'm going to wear it and because it's in style or not. That makes no difference. That's a trick of the spider to get you in his way of spend all of your money trying to keep in style. And then there's the old, star, the old spider web of different kind of clubs and lodges and organizations to get you enslaved in, to keep you away from the house of God and keep you doing your best for God. Be careful about these spider webs. And then there's the web of blindness and procrastination, unbelief. If the devil can keep you going on in unbelief and just keep you moving on without God and have you thinking that one of these days I'll get saved and just before I die, I'll get saved and I'll go to heaven and I'll be all right. God will be glad to have me up there. You know what you've done? You done got your foot in the spider's web. The devil set a web for you out there and you think that you're going to heaven if you're not saved. You just know you're going to heaven. You know you're not going to hell. You know you're going to heaven. You got yourself in the spider's web. You may wind up right in the pit of hell. You have no promise of tomorrow. God's done done all he's going to do to keep you out of hell. Now you're going without Jesus Christ with your feet tangled in the spider whip, you'll die and go to hell. I heard two drunks one time back when I was a young boy, about 19, 20 years old, uh, both of them crying and, and saying, I know God's not going to let me go to hell. Uh, I know God's going to let me go to heaven when I die. The reason I know about that, I was one of them. I was sitting on a bill with my uncle. We sat there and cried like two idiots and said, God's not going to let us go to hell. We're going to heaven when we die. And then we got to crying because our grandparent wasn't saved. They were all sinners, stupid, a bunch of idiots, had our feet in a spider's web and, and carrying on in that manner. If you are lost, your feet's tangled in a spider's web and you may just jump off into hell any minute. You need to repent and get right with God. If you don't do it, God may call you out of this world anytime and you die without Jesus Christ. Now there's other spider webs I could mention. I could stay here until 6 o'clock this evening and trot them out one after another. And you need to be careful about these spider webs. Now a spider web is something that you can't hold on to. In the text I read, that implies that people are grabbing for something that's secure and they grab the spider web. If you're grabbing something for security other than God, you're grabbing a spider web. And what can a spider web hold up? Nothing. You're hanging out there on nothing. And grabbing that spider web is not going to keep you out of hell. It's not going to hold you out of hell. It's not going to hold you up. Don't you grab for a spider web and get your feet in it and get all tangled up. Keep yourself out of these spider webs. You need to do it and do it to the glory of God. Let's stand to our feet, will you please? Our Father, I pray today in Jesus' name that you take the message and use it and help thy people, dear God, not to get caught in the devil's spider web. Our Father, speak to our hearts, speak to the radio listening audience, and may Jesus be glorified through the service today. I pray in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Debbie's playing for us, and while she plays on the instrument, if you're here unsaved, if you're here backslidden, you're here, you want to join this church, you here and got your feet in the spider's web, and you want me to help you get it out, you come down here and I'll do all I can to help you while she plays. today is God speaking as the devil done got you caught in the spider's web and I mentioned today about where you are in that spider's web the devil's got you in the spider's web kick out of it get out of it say by the help and grace of almighty God he's not going to hold me if you're trying to swing on by holding to a spider's web you're in bad shape they're not strong to hold up anything the low fly gets caught in them and makes good food for the spider. The devil will catch you in the spider's web and he eats off of you. You need to realize that. Would you come while we wait?